Hello, this video is the second installment of current mirror matching. So let's start at the mismatch equation of current factor beta and threshold voltage. These equations are known as Pelgram's equations. These equations were proposed in the landmark paper Matching Properties of MOS Transistors. Apart from area proportionality constants A beta and A V T, the variance equation in this paper contains another parameter which describes the variations with spacing. So if I write the variance equation again with this spacing parameter, it would look something like this. So notice here that this is the equation for the variance and not the standard deviation. So the first term here is the familiar term A square by area. And here we have a second term which contains the spacing parameter. D here indicates the distance between two transistors. Unit of S beta is percentage per micrometer and its value is few hundred micro percent per micrometer. Similarly, the unit of S VT is microvolt per micrometer and its value is few microvolt per micrometer. Notice that these values are many orders of magnitude smaller than the corresponding values of A beta and A VT. And that is the reason that we can practically ignore this term for very closely spaced devices. But if two devices are a few thousands of micrometer apart or a few millimeter apart, then these terms starts to affect the matching properties. And that is why it is not often a good idea to have current mirrors with branches distributed across whole chip. So on that note, let's get back to current mirrors again. Consider two transistors M1 and M2 with same width and length. Let's assume sigma i out represent the standard deviation or spread of current i out. Now if we connect another transistor M3 in parallel with M2 with the similar width and similar length and short the outputs, something like this, then what is the spread in the output current i out x2? So if we look at the individual currents of M2 and M3, both will have the mean of i out and the standard deviation of sigma i out. So one way to approach this problem is to consider the currents in M2 and M3 as uncorrelated or independent. And when we add two independent random variables, then their variance add. So from this approach, the total spread of the output would be root two times total spread of the individual current variation. But unfortunately, this answer is incorrect. If we look closely, we can realize that even if these two transistors are independent, the currents are not. There exists a certain correlation between the currents of M2 and M3 because of the common bias transistor M1. And as a result, variance won't simply add. So now let's take a step back and try to analyze this problem intuitively. So if the spread in the currents of M2 and M3 were independent or uncorrelated, then the variation in the total output current would have been root 2 times sigma i out. And if they were fully correlated, then sigma i out x2 would be simply twice as big as sigma i out. But in this case, we are somewhere between these two limits. So we would expect our answer to be between these two limits. Now. There are many ways you can solve this problem, but I will explain a method which utilizes a concept called self-mismatch. Let's first try to understand the contributions of transistor M1 and M2 in the total variation of current I out. Remember from the last video that variation in current factor beta and threshold voltage VTH are responsible for the variation of current I out. We brush the factor VGS aside by saying that there is no mismatch in VGS between transistor M1 and M2. Now, while it is correct to say that there is no mismatch in term VGS between transistor M1 and M2 in the sense that they do not have different VGS. In that sense, the parameter VGS is somewhat different from threshold voltage or current factor beta because M1 and M2 can have slightly different beta or threshold voltages. But if we see this VGS across different chips, then we find there is some variation in VGS. And this variation contributes to the variation of I out. So let's write the equation of variance of I out including the VGS term. 
so here i have written the equation of relative current variance we are already familiar with the first two terms from the previous video and now we have a third term here now we can write the equation of vgs in terms of i in and the parameter of transistor m1 now if we assume that there is no variation in current i in then we can write the equation of variance of vgs using propagation of variance equation so now we can put this equation back into the original equation and assuming that the mean value of vth2 and vth1 are equal these two term cancels out and finally we get something like this so in this equation the first two terms are the mismatch caused by transistor m2 and the last two terms are the mismatch caused by transistor m1 so we see that there are equal contribution from the output transistor and the bias transistor in the relative variance of output current so let's write this complicated equation in somewhat simple form so in this notation r stands for relative variance here i have represented first two terms by sigma square r m2 and the last two terms by sigma square r m1 now let's assume that transistor m1 and m2 are made of identical unit devices moreover let's assume that m1 is made of m unit devices in parallel and m2 is made of n unit devices in parallel now let's define a quantity sigma square r u for this unit device so this quantity is equivalent to sigma square r m2 and sigma square r m1 only it is defined for the unit device m u now since m1 is m unit devices in parallel we can write a relation between sigma square r m1 and sigma square r u so the relative variance in the current of m1 will be m times smaller than the unit device we can write a similar equation for transistor m2 now using these equation we can express the variance of unit devices in terms of variance of i out now this quantity is known as self variance and if we take the square root of both side this is known as self mismatch now by definition the self mismatch of unit transistor will be uncorrelated or independent from each other and we can use this equation along with the equation of self mismatch to calculate the mismatch of any combination of these unit devices so let's come back to our original problem so here we know the mismatch in current i out and we wanted to know how the mismatch would change if we double the output device so let's first calculate the self mismatch so in this example the m and n factors are simply 1 so sigma r u will be sigma r i out divided by root 2 notice that we are talking about relative mismatch here now when we double the device the total relative mismatch in the i out x2 would be the sum of the relative mismatch of input device and the output device here sigma r m1 would be simply the self mismatch because m1 contains just one device or unit device and now since our output device is two unit device in parallel the second term would be self variance over 2 and now we can replace sigma r u by sigma r i out and to finally find the absolute variance we can multiply both side by the square of mean current which is twice i out so after some basic algebra we finally get the desired value so now let's try to make sense of these results here left hand side is two devices in parallel and right hand side is one device so notice that when we double the output device the relative mismatch reduces and absolute mismatch increases we have seen something similar in propagation of variance video when we add independent random variable the relative mismatch reduces and the absolute mismatch increases now looking at the equation of absolute mismatch notice that this factor root 3 matches our intuitive understanding this factor is greater than root 2 but less than twice now let's look at another example and this time by checking some numbers to make more sense of this let's say we have a mirror where bias device is made of two unit devices in parallel and output device is made of three unit devices in parallel 
let's say that we know that the standard deviation of output current is 300 nano ampere or 1%. Now if we increase the number of output parallel devices from 3 to 4, we want to know what will be the error in the new current. So before actually solving it, let's first try to guess what the answer would be. Now since we are adding more devices in parallel, we would expect the absolute error to increase and the relative error to reduce. Okay, so now let's calculate the self mismatch. Next we calculate the relative variance of X4 device. So the relative error in the new current is 0.948% and which is indeed less than 1%. So now let's calculate the absolute error. And we get 379 nanoampere and which is again greater than 300 nanoampere. And that brings us to the end of the video. So let's summarize what we have learned. So we learned that the spread in the output current of a current mirror has contributions from both input device and the output device. In fact, the relative variance of output current is simply sum of relative variance of input device and the output device. As a result, if we want to minimize the variation in output current, we have to improve the variation in both input device and the output device. Then we define the term self mismatch by this equation. Self mismatch can be considered to be an independent variable. Then we learned that if we realize the input or output devices by connecting n unit devices in parallel, then its self variance would be self variance of unit device over n. That also means that we can reduce the relative error in output current by connecting more devices in parallel in input and output devices. That of course means more area and more overall current. Okay, so here is something that you can think about in your spare time. Consider a unit transfer MU which when biased at current IU has self mismatch sigma U. Let's suppose we have 10 such transistors and we arrange them in three different configurations. These three configurations differ in how bias transistor and the output transistors are sized. Now try to figure out the absolute and relative current errors in output currents of all these three configurations. Which of these three give the least absolute current mismatch and which gives the least relative current mismatch? Also can you justify these results intuitively? In the next video, we will discuss the tips to minimize the current mirror mismatch and will also touch upon the layout aspects. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.